Hi, this is Robert Cordini, and I'm the Director of Product Management here at Five9. And here I'm actually going to give you a little tutorial of what Azure, a little introduction of what Azure, um, the portal looks like and some of the things you can get out of the portal. So here we go. As you can see on my screen, we actually have a login to the Azure portal. And I'm going to go log in right now. Just be aware you have to have a live ID or be part of an um, Azure Active Directory um, in order to get into your Azure portal. It would prompt you if you're actually building out a, you know, a free. Uh, there's a trial period where you can cre create your own Azure instance and start doing things. So, um, if you do that, it will prompt you to use your live ID or create a new one. As you can see, when I log in, it's telling me how many credits I have available because I actually have a couple subscriptions, and I can click complete it here because I don't need to see those anymore. And as you can see, there's a dashboard. Um, these dashboards are allow you to be customizable. Um, my dashboard has essentially all my resources, different resources. And you have something called resource groups, which are basically an encapsulation, maybe an entire application, or maybe a couple VMs and stuff of that nature that makes up an, uh, uh, an application. And as you can see, I have a few more here, a few um, groups here, like I have an MDC group, a 5.9 MDC group, and if I click on that, I can actually see all the resources. In this case, I'm actually running a nested Hyper-V, and then I'm running uh, 5.9 Manager on top, just for some uh, UI testing. What's great about resource groups, as an FYI, is that resource groups allow you to essentially group the co group everything so you can look at the costs. So you can see here, um, for this month, or this period, it cost me, uh, for that particular VM, $58, the MDC, VM and a $38, an IP address that you assign to the VM, it's $1.20. As you can see, it's all utility computing, so you have to kind of pay for everything, but it does break it out. So let me get out of that and kind of give you a quick view of what a virtual machine looks like. This is a virtual machine. As you can see, you've got a lot of great stats you can do within a virtual machine. You can click on connect. Um, that allows you to bring up a console and RDP into that machine. If it's Windows, Linux, you'll have to use the traditional um, PuTTY or some uh, other another method of getting in. But as you can see, if I have a public IP address, if I click on networking, I actually have an internal VNet. Um, networking also, as you can see, private IP, and then this is a public IP. I have also inbound firewalling, which is very complex, by the way. There's a lot of little things to actually understand when you do the firewalling, and it's not completely straightforward. And then you have your disks, and obviously if you want to add another data disk to your VM, this is where you could do it. And then that goes on your storage blob. And this is where you can actually change the size of your VM on the fly, which is awesome. So right now, my VM is one CPU, three and a half gigs of RAM, but let's say I needed more, uh, more power to handle more load. Um, on this particular uh, VM. This one's actually my WordPress VM and if I needed more I could actually go to a D2 instance um, and you can see obviously the price difference on that. So that's a, lot, a little bit a brief summary of what the, the that looks like. Um, another great thing is, is, is you have the marketplace and the marketplace essentially gives you the ability to really deploy things um, automatedly. A lot of pre-built applications for example, if I click on, uh, well, I can actually click on Windows Server Data Center here, and I can say create, and essentially it'll go through, and I can name it. Do I want SSD disk, um, username and password? What subscription do I want to put it on? What resource group do I want to assign it to or create a new one? And then what location? And that's sometimes important depending on where you want that data located at. It might be because of geographic reasons, um, because you want your data closer to your users, or even data sovereignty reasons, where you have it wanted to be within country. And also, if you're building your VM, you can actually bring your own Windows Server 2012 license, and then you end up your VM costs end up dropping. So if I went through this little wizard here and t t oops, test, and um, and I know the password has to be. Uh, it's like six, 12 characters, I want to say. There we go. Oops. Wow. Look at that. Well, you get the gist of it. You'd go through, you can choose an existing group, and then you can move forward. 
And if you already have a license, it's actually prompting you to make sure you own that, uh, that you, you know, really own that license. And then your VM costs on the next screen, where it lets you choose the virtual machine size, those costs would be lower. Um, the costs are encompassing of when you don't check that box of, of the virtual machine and also the actual license that's going on Windows Server. But as you can see here, everything's broken into individual things. This is a virtual network. This is basically something they call a VNet, and that allows you to build out another VNet. Everything's broken out into very individual components. You can build out an, a, a, um, a bunch of v, um, VMs inside of a resource group, and in order to protect them, you can actually build out a network security group, and that acts as a firewall for that resource group. And then again, you can, you can add load balancers, make create new resource groups, or add it to existing. These are PaaS applications that you can do. I'll give you a little example here is at 5.9. I gotta type it in. 5.9e has their own firewall here. So it's called 5.9 Smart Firewall. And I can actually go in here, deploy it. Um, once I deploy it, I can actually manage those NSGs and in a very easy to use interface. Um, look at all that billing and some other types of things in a very single pane interface instead of kind of going through the NSGs, um, which are, tend to be a little complicated and sometimes you have to kind of compare things. Also, other great things you can do in here is build out these uh, PaaS applications essentially. And I'll actually give you an example of a PaaS application that is pre-built so you don't have to worry about the underlying you know hardware obviously it's virtualized it's updated and patched on its uh, automatically and you really have to just worry about the top layer really just your application so if I type in WordPress you're gonna notice there's a couple versions of it but if you took this one right here and you'll notice this compute means it's actually on real heart, real virtualization. Mean it, it's an IaaS application. You have to kind of maintain the OS. This right here means it's a real uh, web app on top of it. You don't have to maintain the OS or anything underneath. Linux is the underlying thing, but it's nothing you have to maintain. Um, that's mainly for purposes of WordPress because there's certain configurations of WordPress depending on Windows or Linux. And then you could create. And again, you can build out that sizing scenario and really understand, go through and you know, build out that instance. You can say a database is required because it's typically a MySQL database or something of that nature. So again, Azure has a lot to offer, especially when you want to build out you know, different types of infrastructure. You can build out you know, basically different VNets and they don't even have to communicate with each other. Or you can build a router so those do communicate with each other. A very common scenario is people build VNets on Azure and then they'll build a site-to-site -site tunnel. And actually, we do have an example of that. Where is my home? Oh, let me hit resources groups. Here we go. And I have a home resource group, which is disabled right now. But if you look in here, our, this is a virtual network, my home VNet, which is, means what I have in the cloud that connects to my home. This is my local gateway at home, the IP address of my home, and this is the routing table in order to route to my home address. I have a 192 network there. And then this is an actual connection, essentially my site-to-site -site connection. Essentially, I have a domain controller running at home, and then I do a sync to the cloud um, with my that, with um, a virtual machine running in the cloud called DC01. Now, DC01 is running DurSync and syncing with Office 365. So you can kind of see the old, whole rundown on that. And if I wanted to further expand this out, I could build out ADFS so I can essentially have federation services for Office 365, but not that, just and also federate other things down, down the line. Azure has a lot of great things to offer. Uh, it's pretty intuitive when you want to build things. And again, we have our smart firewall product that allows you to you know, manage NSDs, NSGs, among many other things for you know, resource monitoring or, or viewing costs. And also, we have our product MDC. Upcoming uh, features are going to be able to manage uh, um, your on-prem and Azure cloud all within one tool. So again, that's a great, great way to be able to manage on-prem and the cloud in one single tool. Azure is, this is an introduction to Azure, and I will say is, Azure has matured a long time, uh, a long way. Azure's probably been around for five, six years, and from where it started to where it is now, much, much, you know, uh, intuitive, very much intuitive.
Again, if you have any questions around this, um, you can always shoot to us an email at info at 59.com. You can also reach me at Twitter at, at netwatch on Twitter. And um, you can also, there's a contact form on the 5, contact form on the 59 website. Again, I want to thank you for uh, looking at this introduction of Azure Online. Have a good day.